This video is the first in a series to help those deploying the OpenAM Community Edition. This series has been organized to help new users implement use cases that we have routinely seen as part of POCs. We will start with an overview of what is OpenAM and what you can do with the platform, followed by a high-level overview of the solution architecture, and then we will describe the minimal system requirements, and then ultimately we'll walk through the installation process. OpenAM is an identity governance and web access management platform. Some of the key functionality found in the platform include user lifecycle management, which allows us to manage the user's access from the day that they join the company to the day that they leave. We can integrate with one or more source systems, such as your HR system, or customers can also use the OpenAM UI and API. A related feature is self-service password reset. Through this functionality, end users can use a self-service portal to reset their password without calling the help desk. OpenAM supports password sync, and these changes can be propagated to all connected systems. OpenAM also supports request approval through the self-service portal, such that end users can request access to a system or permissions. After a request has been submitted, workflows will carry out the approval flow, and once all the approvals are in place, OpenAM can automatically provision the requested entitlements. Single sign-on is supported as well. You can configure SSO to your applications using either SAML2 OAuth2 or OpenID Connect. For legacy web applications, you can also use a reverse proxy to enable SSO. Access to the OpenAMP portal and your applications can be secured using flexible policies which support authentication using passwords, certificates, Kerberos, and OTP. While it's a unified platform, you have the option to adapt as much of OpenAMP or as little as you want to. This next slide provides an overview of the OpenAMP architecture. This is to help you understand the components which are being deployed during the installation process. There are four primary sections in the architecture. End users will interact with the UI layer, which consists of the admin interface, self-service portal, and the identity provider. The service layer in OpenIM is essentially an extensive collection of REST APIs, which the UI interacts with. All of the functionality in the OpenIM UI has been implemented using the service layer. That also means, if needed, it's possible to implement a new UI using this API that has been tailored to an organization's specific needs. The service layer in turn interacts with both the OpenIM repository in the database and the infrastructure components. OpenIM is database neutral and you can use MariaDB, MySQL, Postgres, Oracle, or Microsoft SQL Server. This tutorial is based on using MariaDB. The infrastructure components consist of a message bus, which is RabbitMQ, a memory cache, which is Redis, and Elasticsearch, which is used for fast object searches. Most of the, com the components communicate with each other through a message bus. This loose coupling of the components allows for significant flexibility when deploying the solution in production. This next slide describes the available deployment options. The community edition of OpenAM supports deployments based on Docker and RPM. The enterprise version supports additional options. Let's transition now to installing OpenAM. The first step is to ensure that we have met the minimum system requirements. You can deploy on either a VM, physical server, or a cloud instance at AWS, Google, or Azure. Regardless of the environment that you select, for an RPM install, you must be using either Red Hat 7 or CentOS 7. CentOS 8 is not supported at this time. Next, you need to make sure that you have at least 4 vCPUs, 16 gigs of RAM, and 30 gigs of disk. To get started, let's connect to the host where we will be installing OpenIM. Once we're connected, we need to install wget and a text editor. We're going to be using nano in this case, but you can use the editor that you prefer. If we have not done it already, we should define a host name for our instance. We can do this by editing the host file. Not defining this will cause a problem later on in the installation process. The next few steps are needed for the infrastructure components. First, we need to edit the login file. and At the end of that file, add the pamlimits.so entry that you see on the screen. After saving these changes, we need to edit the limits.conf file. 
add the following two entries that you see at the end of the file. Save the file and then reboot your VM to ensure that these changes have taken effect. You can validate them after you reboot by running the following command. These installation steps are based on using OpenAI with MariaDB running locally. So next we need to install MariaDB. File, enter the following yum commands which will first install MariaDB and then it will enable it. The last step in setting up MariaDB is to run the secure installation utility. This utility helps reset the root password and improve basic security. This step should be run before installing the OpenAMP product. You can validate that the password was changed by connecting to the database using the MySQL admin utility as shown on the screen. Now that all the background configuration is in place, we can focus on installing the OpenAM product. The first step is to download the RPM file. We can do this using the wget command. If you need the URL, please contact OpenAM. This is a large file and it will take a few minutes to download. This RPM file is self-contained and can be used in environments where we don't have network access. After the file downloads, we can install the RPM file. This is done using the rpm-i command as shown on the screen. This process will also take a few minutes to complete. The next step to complete our setup is to initialize the components. This is done by calling the service open I'm init command. The init process will run for a few moments as well. Along the way, it will ask you for your credentials to connect to the database and if you want to install the reverse proxy. Follow that process which is being shown on the screen including installing the reverse proxy which has multiple roles in the OpenAMP platform. Once the components have been successfully initialized, we can start OpenIM using the service OpenIM start command. This operation is starting the components which we installed earlier and this process can take 5 to 10 minutes. We can monitor the progress by running the service OpenIM status command which will tell you which components are already up. Once all the components are up, we can try to log in. We can see that the application is up. Let's try to log in. Use your browser to access the admin interface at the URL which is shown on the screen. At the login prompt, enter your default password. The system will then ask you to change it. You will have the option to change this password again later and update your password policy. After that, you need to complete the challenge response questions. This will come in handy if you accidentally lock yourself out.
The last step to complete the installation is to define a default content provider. This configuration tells OpenAI which URLs it should respond to and where the service layer is located. The concept of content providers in OpenAI will be discussed in greater length in subsequent tutorials. It provides significant flexibility in terms of how it can be configured. After setting the content provider, we need to wait about five minutes for the internal cache to refresh. Once this is done, we're ready to implement our remaining use cases, which are described in the other tutorials. This concludes our video. Thank you for watching.